but yes, reasons behind the purchase. Um, with the latest fuel crisis that we've had down in the south, I don't think it's affected the rest of the country quite as bad as us greedy southerners. Um, I started looking at electric bikes, but none of them have got the range that I want, that I need, um, for the price. So for four and a half grand, I could get an electric bike, what was that, a Super Soco TC Max, which would, which would get me to work and part way back on full power. And I needed it on full power, because at full power, it's meant to do 60 mile an hour. Until you have a look at the reviews, and then everyone's saying, Sort of 50 is about where it is, which for dual carriageway work is not very good. You want to at least be doing 70 to stand a chance of staying with the traffic. So that was out the window, and the next electric bike with more range is about 12 13 grand which is a zero, I don't know what denomination it was, there's a, there's a few that will that work the same battery or motor, just have a different body style. But yes, it's, um, it's about 12 or 14 grand and it's like, I, I, don't, I didn't want to put that much investment in something. So then I started looking at the small CC bikes, which will do twice the miles on a gallon of fuel. And being that I'd had the 650 V-Strom and the 1000cc V-Strom, I thought, why not try the 250? Oh, overcooked that a little bit. Well, I probably didn't, but <laughs> this is the first ride out I've had on this. And the weather we've had recently, and the weather we've had recently, these... Uh, these back streets aren't going to be very nice, not going to be very grippy. This is um, Ditchling Beacon, and this is the hill leading to Ditchling Beacon, which you won't see on the camera, but it's probably angled, and these sections sort of like that, and then you've got all the sweeping curves, and it's one of the routes that the cyclists like to do up and down the hill so you have to be a little bit wary and it sort of whoops that's wide thought you had a trailer on so yes I thought I'd try out a little 250 and whilst looking they was all around three and a half grand and then I found this one which was just under three grand a quid under three grand now let's go left until it starts getting foggy Yeah, this was a quid under three grand, and it has the luggage as well. It has the panniers, should I say. It hasn't, hasn't got the top, yeah, see, it's already getting foggy. That's no good. That's no good. But we'll stop down here and let you have a look at the bag. Um, yeah, it's got the panniers, actual Suzuki panniers. Oh, this is really, there's nothing worse to ride in than fog. Oh, there's a little clear spell. Yeah, so I've got to put my, is that a turn in?
That looks like a turning. Let's go down the turning. I've got to put my Givy plate on the back rack. Let's pull in here. Bit of off-roading. It is an adventure bike after all. <laughs> right, there you go. Let's put that down there. Oh. You can possibly see it across the field there. All the, all the cobwebs covered in dew. Anyway, shut up. Um, there it is. My V-Strom 250. And I haven't had a massive <laughs> close look at it, but the quick view that I did have of it, it is immaculate. Um, and weirdly, it's got a really tough bash plate at the front there. And the 650 and the, I don't know about the, 10, the new 1050s, the new um, V-Strom, but my 1000 and the 650 just came with a plastic cover over that. Yet this is less likely to be an off-road vehicle because of its clearance and everything than the, 250, uh, the 650 or the 1000. So it's weird that they've put this heavy duty bash plate on it. Um, but yeah, it is what it is. It's the 250cc V-Strom Sport Adventure Tourer. And it's not sport. It's not sport. I'm having a little adventure. I was having a nightmare earlier with the thick fog. Um, and will I discover whether it's a Tourer? I don't know. Anyway, I've got to put my Givy adapter plate on the back here so I can get my top box on it but yes it's got the the um, panniers they came with it um, the good thing about the the V-Strom and its pannier setup is when they're off there's no big framework here so you get a good view of it all um, 18 plate it's done about 2,000 miles two and a half thousand miles Uh, 2,248 miles is all it's done. Lovely little screen on it um, with the white white digits on the black background. Yeah, it looks um, it's very clear, very easy to read, even for me, and I'm blind. Um, what else can I say? You know, it's a it's a 250. Cost me three thousand pound. Have a look, they're all three and a half. But I am surprised at its its turn of speed and its acceleration. I was expecting a real dog, but um it's not too bad actually. It's a lovely chromed brake lever. I wonder if the gear lever's the same. It is look at that, it's super shiny. So there you go, single disc at the front, which has given me no bother at the moment to stop. As I say, the, the handlebars, for an adventure bike, they come up and out. So you are quite narrow, which would be ideal for filtering. My thousand was a bit, would I get through, would I not? Um, so it's a bit thinner for that. Um, but they just want canting forward a bit. And the seat, that, that is definitely a slide, not a seat, because there's no grip on that at all. You just, you just sliding everywhere. This must undo. Is there a key? In, there it is. There you go, toolkit. Not much room for anything, but there's the... Rear shock, quite easy to get to the top adjustment. That so you must be able to adjust that for preload. Um, and everything, as per most Suzuki's, really easy to get at. 
battery fuses, relays, all that sort of carry on, but no storage, no storage under there. So, kitty. There you go, I'm a little 250. Wondrous. Um, Manoeuvring it in the shed this morning. The stand is too far forward. You know how sometimes you lean it. Hang on. How you lean it over and then want to just pull on the handlebars, take the weight and pivot it round. Well, it's not far enough back, or the, the balance of it's not far enough back, to actually allow the back end to lighten up and move. So it's a bit bit of a pain to manoeuvre, but it is quite lightweight. I think it's about 180, 190 kilos with the fluids. Um, 12 volt socket. 12 volt socket and it's a full cigarette lighter as well not just your USB socket so you can stuff whatever you want in there which is quite quite different um, do I try the Misty Roads yeah yeah still getting used to it It's because you are quite 90 degree elbows. When you want to do that tight turn, you're bringing your elbow right into your, into your gut. And being that my gut is so big, it gets in the way of manoeuvring. It gets in the way of everything, actually. Especially going pee pee. And yes, as I say, for the fuel crisis, it, it's um, it'll enable me to sort of compete with that sort of carry-on. Um, with doing double the miles per gallon than my other bikes and my car, probably three times as much as my car. Um, but also, I bought it for this sort of stuff. Just pissing about down little country lanes. I wanted something with enough cruising speed that if I go along dual carriageways, if I go along dual carriageways, I've got enough speed to cruise. and to get me to a destination and then to have a look around it's not ideal you're not looking for a petrol station every five minutes they reckon you'll get over 300 miles to the tank which for a 17 litre tank I think they reckon about 80, 80 miles to the gallon, 90 miles to the gallon. I don't know how how frugal you've got to be or how careful you've got to be with your throttle hand. It's all a bit slippery down here. And again another, well as you've seen, cycle route. Doesn't seem to be that busy this morning. Yeah, it's all getting a bit misty again.
miss that gear. Yeah, it's a bit of a, as I say, it's got to be one of the worst weathers to go biking in. There you go, 0 to 60 in about four days. Beautiful! Well, there you go, there's my first, first ever ride out on my Suzuki V-Strom DL250 a 2018 version um, upgrades wise handguards gotta get that wind chill off especially with winter approaching heated grips <laughs> because I'm really old and I prefer to wear my summer gloves all year round so yeah heaty grips but the the ones I'll get for this will be um, for low CC so I don't know whether they'll get warm enough I think they go to 45 degrees which should take some of the the chill off but they take they draw less than Less, less than three amps or something the Oxford ones so I think it's those I'll be investing in about 54 quid and I think engine bars I'm not sure they do the um, sliders the frame sliders for it there's no easy access to the to the frame mounting or the top engine mounting or whatever it is to put those on So it'll probably be engine bars. But yeah, it's already got the hand guards. Just need to buy the rest of it. So if you are interested in the V-Strom 250, subscribe and um, you'll see me fitting hand guards heated grips and indeed engine bars at some stage but for now that's my initial but for now that's my first ride out on my new to me 2018 V-Strom 250 V-Strom 250 DL250 whatever you want to call it it's a 250 and it's a Suzuki and it's not a V it's a parallel twin do a top minute out with petrol if anyone's got any has anyone got any there's a motorbike shop there look Got a bit of premium. E10. I don't know if I'll take E10. Must do, mustn't I? We've got to set the trip. That's that zeroed. Let's see how many miles I get. 
This is crazy, they come in from both ways. That's brilliant. It looks like they're backing up to get fuel and this guy wants to get out. No, because I'm here. Right, eh? You awkward cow. <laughs>